Good afternoon, everybody in the leading California land. Um, this is David Berry along with Terry Gilliam. And uh, I, I don't know, Terry, I always get so excited every time we do one. I feel like I'm sitting in the, my chair's a little low. But uh, with today, the reason I'm excited is because we have Isaac Chavez, uh, Isaac Chavez from Boise, Idaho. So Chavez, Chavez, Chavez. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> It's so, not Boise, okay. it's Boise, and it's not Chavez, it's Chavez. There you go, Terry. Oh, Terry. no, the boss is already starting to correct me. Good <laughs> afternoon, Mr. Gilliam. How are you today, sir? Never better, David. It's uh, We're hitting 70 degrees today here in Central Florida. A little wow. bit cloudy, but that's okay. We'll uh, And it's going to be 80 degrees about two or three days from now. So it's a rough January in Florida, I'll tell you that. Suffering in the, in the uh, 70s and 80s here. <laughs> Um, and Isaac, uh, you know, that's something that we talk about every week when we go to different cities throughout the country. I guess we have to hit the weather a little bit. Well, you know, I'm always proud that Boise is a four seasons community. You know, we, we literally have a distinct summer, winter, spring and fall. But we did get hit with a pretty big dose of winter this last two weeks, just like a lot of places did. And uh, it got down really cold. We had a, about a foot of snow on the ground, which is not normal. This is the most uh, wet winter we've had since 2017. Um, so it's not something that happens every year. Um, but the good news is, you know, the kids got three snow days. They had a blast not going to school um, and it started melting. We're back in the forties, Terry. We hit 45 mm. degrees today. So the snow's melting and everything's back to normal. But generally, because this is the Southern Southwestern corner of Idaho, it's the arid desert climate. So we don't get the heavy winter and heavy snow that you get up north in the Coeur d'Alene area or on the eastern side of the state. So that stereotype and myth of Idaho being covered with snow applies to about three fourths of Idaho. But we're in the one fourth that doesn't generally. Well, and, and on that note, Isaac, uh, you can address this too. People hear desert, they say, oh my gosh, I, I'm leaving a place that doesn't have any water. Uh, I don't want to go to another desert place, but it's not the case in Boise because you guys have a ton of water. Why don't you address that real quick, too? Yeah. When I mentioned like the arid desert climate, I imagine people can understand like an Albuquerque, New Mexico or a, almost a Reno, Nevada type climate. So it's totally dry, zero humidity. Uh, you're not going to sweat here. Um, so we do not lack water. In fact, we have something called the um, Snake River uh, uh, Basin which is underneath us. And there's about, I might misspeak here, but it's something ridiculous, like two or three trillion gallons of purple pipe water underneath us. So because of that, we don't lack water. So that's why this picture behind me, that's that's stereotypical of all the houses in Idaho, in Boise especially. There is no problem with water in your grass. There are no restrictions. In fact, most of the landscaping water is usually basically free or included in your HOA dues. There are no extra charges. It's not billed to the city or the municipality. It literally is like $50 a year and you can water as much as you want and no problems. We get our electricity from hydropower. So we have the cheapest electricity rates in the country as well. Um, so we don't have any of those issues. So uh, Terry, before we dive into Boise, am I, I'm gonna ask Isaac if I'm saying it right because uh, Terry's all <laughs> Boise, right? Terry is right. It is actually pronounced with an S, not a Z. So, I mean, most people say Boise, but it's actually an S. So it's Boise. Boise. Yeah. So, um, Terry, yeah. one of the things that I, I found really interesting is we have been getting a ton of posts uh, about <clears throat> Boise and Idaho. Um, one of these has 32,000 people that it had to reach and over 500 comments. And the comment was, I need people from Boise, Eagle Star area to give uh, more straight. Is is the area turning blue? <laughs> and um, there have been some other posts about Idaho. And um, Terry, why do you think that there's so much activity with this with this state? And have you been there, Terry? Because I haven't. Isaac gave me an amazing tour of Boise in April of twenty one. Yes. So gosh, is that it's not almost three years ago? My yeah, gosh, yeah. I can't believe that's gone by that fast. I, I I fell in love with the town. April was a it was a beautiful time of the year. I'm as Isaac said, it, it's uh, generally very nice weather anyway. 
Uh, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Uh, he showed me all around. I fell in love with Boise. Um, you know, I moved to Florida, but uh, for those who are considering it, ab absolutely. I'll let Isaac uh, uh, discuss the political side of it. Now, as a realtor, he doesn't take sides, um, but I'll let him address that because there are some blue areas. Yeah. Um, but, the, uh, but for the most part, Idaho is a very conservative state, and this is the capital is Boise. So I'll let Isaac handle that. But uh, no, I've been, to, I, I absolutely love Boise. You know, it's not a, it's not a coincidence that this Boise sign is red. You know, <laughs> and that's a major landmark in downtown Boise. So yeah, you know, obviously, um, you know, we, we want anybody who wants to move to, to Idaho and escape California to come. But generally, most of the people that are leaving California, just like the rest of the states, tend to be conservative. Um, or Republican leaning. So Idaho is probably in the top two or three most conservative uh, states in the country by far. I would put it up there with places like Alabama and states like that. Uh, our politics is completely dominated by the Republican Party. The legislature is the polar op mirror opposite of California. So it's a super majority Republican, uh, veto proof, it has every state office holder is a Republican. There's not a single uh, Democrat office holder uh, statewide, like attorney general in those offices. Um, but I will be honest with you, we don't consider Boise to be just Boise. We call it the Treasure Valley. And I think that's what we kind of call it um, in the Leaving California sites as well. So the Treasure Valley is actually what somebody would uh, refer to as the Boise metropolitan area. It actually encompasses nine cities and towns that all surround Boise, if you look at a map. So when you take all that into consideration, it's called the Treasure Valley. Every single city and town of those nine, except Boise proper, are dominated with a Republican government, Republican mayors, city councils, county treasurers. Boise is the only city that literally has a, a Democrat mayor. But here's the good news. Because the rest of everything else is red, that that Boise mayor gets to bring the good things that, that can come out of that. So for example, when you're in Boise, we have electric bikes and electric scooters. They're really handy. You can ride them all over the green belt and all over to the zoo. We have, we have the coolest things that way. But in Idaho, the government, the state legislature controls almost everything. So cities don't have any power in Idaho. It's not a home rule state. I know that's kind of technical, but in Idaho, cities don't have as much power as they do in other states. So they can't even make their own uh, sales taxes. The, the sales tax in Idaho is 6% everywhere. Mm -hmm. Local cities can't add on top of that, even though they want to, they can. So anyway, we have the best of both worlds. We have all the things that you would expect from a conservative government, but then we have some of the, the goodies that a, that, a, that a liberal mayor could bring but keep in mind, Boise itself is surrounded by the other eight conservative cities. So there's the political uh, test for today. Wow, that was that was that was probably the best. I've we've had a lot of realtors on here, Isaac, and I swear that was the one of the best descriptions of what the political environment is. I have two little pieces of information that I want to cover before we really dive in and and get to Boise. Um, Isaac was one of the very first premier realtors, and I believe that Isaac uh, actually helped with the uh, with the inception of this. And in the beginning, I think he was number two or three. He's been around for over five years. I've been I've only been around for two years. And if you want to talk a little bit about uh, that beginning, when Terry used to say, "I hope I get up to two hundred members," and now he's got over three hundred thousand. Talk about the beginning, and then I want to talk about the the client that we actually helped leave from the group, but wasn't even in California. So I wanna talk about those <laughs> things to dive in. So first, talk about those early days when I wasn't around and how you met Terry and uh, w w what it was like back then. Gosh, well, Terry and I have a mutual friend, His name is Matt Fagioli in Atlanta, Georgia, really good friend of ours. And um, gosh, I think we only, you didn't even have a hundred members yet. I think you were just, celebrating a hundred members. And I got to meet Terry at a convention. Was it in New Orleans, Terry? Yes, it was New Orleans. New Orleans in 2018 in the fall. 
And uh, we hit it off and we have a similar background in many ways. And we both spent many years in the organized real estate world. He was more on the tech side and I was on the association side. So we just had a lot in common, um, the way we raise our kids and the way we, we go to church and all these wonderful things. So uh, we hit it off and uh, yeah, I joined him right away and I have to show you something. Um, <laughs> I actually had this sign made. Look at that. Nice. I'm leaving Cal it's hard to see it with the thing, but I, I see it, it. It matches what's behind Terry. And back in those days, the first few people that we helped, they would sign it. So oh, those are the true. first buyers, and they dated it, like 2020, uh, 2019. So yeah, those were the those were the golden days when there was hardly anybody on the site, and we couldn't even imagine 5,000, 10,000, nonetheless 300,000. So. Terry, what do you have to add to that? Well, that's right. I uh, I think it was October, if I'm not mistaken, of 2018. I started this group, I think it was like September 18th. So yes. yeah. uh, it was only a month into the group. And as you said, I don't. I think I'd maybe had 100 people, but they were all my friends and <laughs> anybody else that I could talk into joining the groups. And uh, yeah, that, those were the uh, trailblazing days, of course, having no idea that it would ever turn into anything that it has. But of course, I wasn't happy living in California. And I knew I wasn't the only person not happy with the way the state was being run and the cost of living and everything else. We all love the weather. We all love the beauty of California. But if you can't afford to, uh, you know, pay your mortgage or rent or anything else and you're living paycheck to paycheck, it's a miserable. Uh, and you sit in traffic every day, all day, um, both ways to work and on the weekends, too. In fact, I'll, I'll just share this real quick. I remember being in Los Angeles at two in the morning, driving, I was drink, driving from San Diego to, I think it was somewhere inland. I had to go through LA. And at two in the morning, I was in traffic for hours. It was ridiculous. In fact, I even took a picture, welcome to LA, and we're just absolutely stopped for miles and miles. So I, I don't miss any of that stuff. And, uh, and that's why I think so many people, and of course, as you said, Isaac, uh, so many people wanted to go to a free state and that's why uh, so many people have moved to, to Boise and Idaho. Definitely. So basically every week we say the same things. And I know our listeners and our members probably get tired of me saying this, but I mean, it's so positive mm -hmm. and it's a fact. Terry has done such an amazing job. And every single time I do an interview, I think this is like our 30th show that we've done or 25th wow. show. And we do this every Monday. Me and Terry made the commitment that we'll do this every Monday to help our members to figure out where they should go and to give them some tips about leaving. And, you know, it just comes through in every video, how passionate, how genuine you are. I know that people don't get off a plane in Boise and, and you're saying, where do you want to buy? How much do you want to spend? Let's talk about this city. Let's see if this is right for you. Let's see if your family will be happier here. So I, I just want to, I, I do it every week, but hats off to Terry for picking the best realtors throughout the country and, and we have such an amazing group. So the second thing I said, and we try to keep it, be a little respectful on time, but we had a client that uh, Isaac and I helped and they weren't even in the group. She was an amazing lady. She used to be on the group and, she, and can you just share that story real quick of how we help people and they don't even have to be from California. Yeah, that was uh, Mike and Linda Arms, and that was this past summer. They originally were from California, but they had moved to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a couple of years ago, and um, they 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 didn't they didn't they couldn't deal with the humidity, I guess, and a couple of other things, the bugs. That's what they kept saying is the bugs, the mosquitoes, or whatever, the chiggers, or whatever. So they decided they wanted to come back west, but they definitely had no interest in going back to California. They're diehard conservatives and business people. Um, so they somehow, um, through the Leaving California groups, saw saw some of the information and they requested my relocation guide, which we have a very, very awesome relocation guide that covers the entire area. And uh, yeah, they ended up uh, buying a new construction here, a Toll Brothers house, and they're tickled pink. They uh, still keep in touch with them. They uh, they seem to be very happy here. They were a little bit surprised by this harsh winter the last few weeks, but everybody knows it's not normal. That's like a once every five to ten years snow. So that that's a great story, and it's just really uh, it's really refreshing 
to know that we help people relocate, not just from California, but the majority and, and our member, our 300,000 members, they're mostly all from California, but uh, that's a great story. And it was yeah. a lot of fun helping them. They were really, really awesome people. Terry, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Let's dive into boys C <laughs> and uh, let's fire away. Go ahead, Terry. Yeah, so it, uh, when people hear Boise, as Isaac, as you said, you've got a lot of other towns around. I remember going to Cuna. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the, what's the what's that? Enrique's? Is that the Mexican yes. restaurant? Yes, yes. Enrique's, I got to tell you, people complain, oh, I moved to here, I moved there, the Mexican food sucks, everything else. Enrique's was as good as anything I ever had in California. Table side guacamole, made it yes. table side. It was spectacular. Uh, so can you just kind of touch upon the areas that you're seeing that people are moving to that uh, more reflects of what they're they're they like in the, the, the things they like about California, but not the things they hate about California? So, you know, for generations, Boise was flyover territory, right? I mean, really, you would you would never stop here. You would just fly over on your way to the Seattle or Portland or California and on the other side, Denver or even Salt Lake City underneath us. Um, but finally, about 20, 25 years ago. What happened is we had a couple of really large corporations uh, get really big, uh, especially Micron. So Micron is the biggest economic driver. You know, they're the ones that make the most computer chips for all the laptops in the world. That was founded and based here in Boise. Now, of course, now they have factories all over the world in Taiwan. They just received a commitment to invest $20 billion to expand that, Terry. And they're actually working 24 hours a day, seven days a week building these huge, huge, gigantic buildings out there, it's supposed to bring another 10,000 jobs, which sounds kind of ridiculous. But um, so we had Micron and then we had Chobani come in and Cliff Bars, um, Vacasa, T-Mobile, Intuit, all these major corporations discovered the low cost of living, but with the awesome lifestyle of the Four Seasons, and they decided to set up shop here. And then that accelerated during the pandemic because what happened is suddenly all the California Silicon Valley companies like Facebook and Google, they all started to allow their employees to work from home. So a bunch of those guys and girls realized that they could buy a house here in Boise for nothing compared to what they were paying over there in San Francisco and work from home here and enjoy their Silicon Valley salaries. That has not really tapered off, even though a lot of companies have required their employees to go back to work. A lot of the Silicon Valley companies haven't actually done that, especially some of the, the IT and the engineer types. So we're still seeing that here. Even today, I had a client three days ago who called me. Um, it was a referral from another client from a while ago who works for a Facebook. Terry in CUNA, the city you went to, where Enriquez is, they're about to open a $500 million uh, Facebook uh, warehouse, or what do you call it, the not a warehouse, but a, a data warehouse. So all full of servers. It's massive. And um, he's transferring for that. So we're, we're seeing a lot of that. We have Amazon here now. They have one of their largest distribution centers in the country here. Um, since they opened two years ago in Nampa, we now can get delivery uh, pretty much within two to three hours on most items. It's pretty cool. My, my daughter ordered something last week. And they literally delivered it. I'm not making this up. It was delivered at 1 a.m. Wow. On my doorstep at 1 a.m., not in the daytime. So so we had that's part of the reason why we have all these uh uh people that are still coming here. So once once this place was discovered, we had to catch up with the infrastructure. And so luckily we had so much commercial development and business development that we've been able to keep our property taxes in check because the commercial activity is able to pay for a lot of the development. So that's why we have such beautiful amenities here. You know, we have a, we have a 22 mile green belt, which is a walking, jogging, biking path that goes along the Boise River uh, around the entire city. And you never have to cross traffic. It goes up and down through tunnels, special bridges. There's tons of wineries and beer places and restaurants along the trail, cafes, and you never have to cross traffic. So it's safe. It's well lit. It's uh, they spend it's like kind of like the river walk in San Antonio, except not not uh, as uh, commercialized as far as uh, restaurants and hotels, but just an incredible amenity here. 
Wow, so it's so it's so amazing to have an encyclopedia of of the town that you're thinking about leaving, and somebody that's not going to be salesy, somebody that's not going to just be trying to get a get a sale, but they're going to be creating a new family member, somebody that they're going to be involved in their life, and they're going to be involved in this transition. So, um, wow, I didn't, I you just educated me on on a lot of stuff, and, and this is on my bucket list. I would love to come and check out the city and and I definitely will get up there eventually. I have a couple of students of mine that live in that area that uh, that I used to train in martial arts when I used to teach. Yep. Um, so what you're saying, Isaac, is there's a ton. Uh, it sounds like just a ton of, of job opportunities. So that's something we always talk about. So I would imagine you're you're way up there on on that. We we, we only have a two percent unemployment rate here. I mean, for the lack of a better word, everybody can work. Now, there are some differences between California and Idaho, and, and the biggest one is we don't have strong unions in, Cal in Idaho, not at all. So we don't have a lot of the higher wages and salaries that some people are used to. So, for example, when we get nurses or uh, firefighters and police officers that want to leave California and they start researching here, they find out pretty quickly that they're going to take a pretty decent pay cut. Mm -hmm. But what we tell them, though, is on the opposite side, though, you're not going to have five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar electric bills. We have the cheapest electricity in the country. It's about a hundred bucks a month. Family of five working from home. So you know, car registration is a hundred dollars a year. We don't have smog and emissions testing here. Um, so if you take that into consideration, most of them still make the move here. Um, so you know, so jobs are plentiful. We also have, uh, gosh, five. Yeah, five major universities are are here. So you, you, not just Boise State, which of course is the most famous, but we have University of Idaho, College of Idaho, Idaho State. We have a law school. They they're all four year colleges, and then we have about a dozen trade schools and community type colleges, junior colleges also. So there's plenty of opportunities for education. Um, the trades are very big here because we are growing so fast. If you if you can uh, be outside and help build houses, you'll make $100,000 a year. You can yeah. be a roofer, a tiler, a sheetrocker and make 100 grand with low taxes easily. Um, so, and because the weather is so decent here, you really don't mind working outside. You know, it never gets excessively hot. It never gets excessively cold. So it's one of those places where you can work outside in those types of jobs year round. And then we have three hospital systems, which I like to brag about too. You know, we have three massive hospital systems that are the largest employers in the state. We have uh, St. Luke's, which is a Protestant-based hospital system, and St. Alphonsus, which is a Catholic-based hospital system. And then we have the VA hospital. And our VA hospital was ranked number two in the country last year for customer service and cleanliness and all that. So between all of that, there's tons of opportunity to work, but there's also... Um, you don't ever uh, lack for any type of healthcare options if you're moving here, because we do get a lot of people that are uh, baby boomers or older that want to leave California and they're worried about leaving their healthcare and Kaiser Permanente and all that stuff. And so we try to let them know that we we have we have adequate facilities for them. Well, you know what, Isaac, um, one of the segues that we get into education and you really covered the um the top levels of education, college level educations is typically on our segue to that point. Uh, I'm blown away at how many people that are in our groups in the leaving California groups that they say, we just can't raise, I can't see us raising our kids in California. I just don't want to do that to my children. So obviously there's a lot of families and there's a lot of people that take their children. I mean, I put my kid first and I know you guys probably both do. I can see your kids behind you. And I know how close Terry is. He just was in a wedding with his son recently, and he's he's very heavily involved. So children are are so important. But I was blown away at how many people have said, we just can't raise our children here in um, in California. We just don't want to do that to them. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about children education and, and the school districts, and also maybe talk about the communities that you serve a little bit more. That'd be awesome. Thank you, Isaac. Well, as you see my family, I have three children, um, 12, 14, and 16. So they've pretty much been raised here. This is probably the safest place you can imagine. I mean, part of the attraction to Boise is it's super clean, super safe. There is no homelessness, zero. There's no tents. There's none of that stuff. There's no graffiti. We have the lowest meth rate in the country. We don't really have an issue with drugs. 
Uh, most people go to some kind of church here. Uh, not everybody, but most people, you know, are either Christians or Catholics or, or Latter-day Saints. Um, and I think that plays into that. So everybody is really respectful of each other's space. Um, but the, the safety is a big one. I don't have a problem with my kids riding their bikes anywhere. Uh, my wife can be showing houses or she's a realtor as well. She can be driving around. I don't live in fear for my family's safety. Um, it's Idaho is also what's called a constitutional carry state. So you just go with the assumption that every single person is is packing a, a handgun or of some type. And that kind of keeps everybody, you know, minding their own business when it comes to that. And I know that that's a, a big feature of why a lot of people choose to move to Idaho is because of that. Um, so the schools are incredible here. Um, we don't have probably the highest ranked public school system in the country um, because for many reasons, one of that is that we don't we don't tax our residents the kind of tax money that you see in California. So the, the public dollar that's invested into public schools is sufficient. It's not excessive like California and other states. Um, but it also probably means that our, our public schools are not the highest ranked. But to make up for that, we have probably the, the most vibrant community of private charter schools, magnet schools, STEM schools, religious schools that you can see in a city this size. There's something for everybody. The charter schools are basically free as well, but they cover everything under the, the, the gamut from magnet schools. We have an international school here. Uh, my my daughter attends a classical Christian private school where they learn Latin and they have to do cursive for everything. And so my two sons recently transferred to a military school. Um, but the thing I like to talk about the most is homeschooling, because I know that's one of the biggest things in our groups. People always want to know, can we homeschool? Because states like California are so anti-homeschool because of the strong teachers unions. Well, Idaho is probably the most, in a good way, progressive state in the country when it comes to homeschooling. They actually have a system here that if you homeschool your kids, you can get $800 a semester per child from the government to help buy school supplies for your kids. It's that simple. You just have to keep up, keep up on the website what your kids are learning, and they also provide all kinds of field trips and activities so, I mean, the state government actually supports homeschooling financially. So it's a pretty cool thing here. So all of that is available. There's Waldorf schools. There's Montessori schools. Um, there's there's everything you can imagine. There's Catholic schools, Christian schools. Um, and then the public school system, like I said, they're, it's okay. I mean, I'm, we're not going to say they're not okay. There's plenty of good schools. Um, and they all provide uh, buses and uh, you know, most of them lunch is really cheap, if not free, it's like a dollar or something. So there's plenty of schools for everybody. Um, but most importantly, the schools are safe. This is a very safe community. People send their kids off to school happily. Um, you don't have to walk through, uh, what do you call those? The security checkpoints to go Metal into detectors. Schools. Yeah, none of that stuff here. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty nice. It's a big relief as a parent um, that I don't go through my day really worrying about my children's safety. And I know that might seem extreme, but there are lots of places in this country right now where parents do worry about that. And I'm, I'm so blessed that I don't have to. Isaac, you have really exceeded my expectations. <laughs> I knew this was going to be an amazing podcast and you, you, you go above and beyond when you explain. And I really appreciate that. And uh, for people that are listening and, and considering our area, this is going to be great information for them. Uh, Terry did ask you a little bit about real estate. I want to go back into that. And then I know Terry's probably got a couple of questions about your city and your area. My question on real estate is I want to get a little bit more specific on price points and communities sure. and what that looks like. And then the, um, you know, days on market and what your inventory looks like there. And then I'll let Terry ask the next one. So, the Treasure Valley is really made up of three counties. So Boise itself is uh, named Ada County, A-D-A. -A. It's like A-D-A, Ada, Ada County. And that that covers Boise, Meridian, Eagle, um, which are the, in CUNA, which are the kind of the big cities. And then we have Canyon County, which is adjacent to us. And that, that counts places like uh, Nampa, Caldwell, uh, Middleton. So all of that together pretty much makes up the Treasure Valley. Um, 
real quickly before I give you stats, though, I wanted to, to brag again about uh, the area. So Nampa, which is about 100,000 people, and it's next door to Boise, Nampa has been voted the number one best managed city in America, like five of the last six years running by, I don't know, Money Magazine or one of those magazines. That's an incredible feat. And Boise itself comes in number three in that same ranking. So out of the top three, these both cities are well managed. And one of them has a, a liberal mayor and the other one has an extremely conservative mayor. But what that tells you, though, is that we don't have corruption here. The cities are well managed. They hire really good city managers and employees and department heads. We don't have corruption trials. We don't have uh, mayors getting arrested and people like that. And that really keeps everything flowing. And it also means that the public has faith and trust in their local government, which is a rare thing in America these days. Uh, here, we we feel pretty good. So anyway, just I wanted to say that. But you know, the one negative about Boise is that we grew so fast that, you know, gosh, when I first met Terry five years ago, our median price was probably around uh, 280000 maybe $300,000. Well, you know, about a year ago, right before the interest rates took off, we were all the way up to $600,000, so more than doubled. Mm. Good news is it's come back down a little bit. So as of like literally the end of December, the median price for a home in the Ada County area, which is basically Boise Meridian, is about 515000 so it's about 100,000 less than at the peak. Uh, and that's going to get you a, a four bedroom, two bath, three car garage, you know, 2,000, maybe 2,300 square foot house uh, on a fifth of an acre. So that sounds pretty good to most people leaving California, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still more than, you know, other places in the country. Um, but once again, our property taxes are relatively low. Um, everybody in Idaho, gets a $125,000 um, discount on their tax assessment for their owner-occupied property. That's a huge, huge incentive. It's only for the house you live in. So if your house is assessed at $400,000, you're only getting taxed on $275,000. And it's it's about 0.8%. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's relatively affordable. It's not highly taxed. There are no transfer taxes. There's hardly any type of impact fees. There's none of that garbage that you see in places like California and Washington State. Um, so we sell a lot of houses here. Um, my goodness, just in a in last year alone in Ada County, there was almost ten thousand houses sold, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. And even with that, we're still Sounds crazy, but we're still about 10,000 short of what we need to keep up with the demand. Right. The builders are building as fast as they can because Boise has a very conservative government. Uh, Idaho, uh, excuse me, Idaho, they brag about having the least amount of regulations. Mm -hmm. Our governor actually had a big press conference a couple of years ago and says that he cut so much red tape and the governor before him and the governor before him that we have the least uh, amount of state regulations in the country. So building is not hard to do here. They, I mean, they still have to have rules and stuff, but there's nothing holding it back. It's not like there's environmental courts and all that other stuff that you see in California. They just can't keep up. So if you're willing to work in the housing industry, you can make a very good living and your work is pretty much guaranteed. Um, outside of funeral homes, I think uh, the building industry in Idaho is probably the most guarantee of future income. And Isaac, for our Leaving California members, is there a difference that stands out in your mind for um, when you buy a property, as opposed to if somebody's used to buying properties in California for 25 years, and now they come to a different state? That's something that we like to re remind our members is every time you buy or sell in a different state, it's going to be different because every state has different laws. Yeah, well, you know, my personal business, uh, my wife and I, about 70% of our clients are coming from you know, California, Washington, Oregon, even some from Arizona. So we're totally comfortable and used to helping um, out-of-state clients. And so a lot of it is a little bit different. Sometimes you know you have to do most of the shopping virtually. Um, it's not always possible for the, the Californian to come here. So we, we do a lot of house hunting for them. We do a lot of FaceTiming from properties, a lot of virtual tours. 
Um, we do a lot of negotiations on Zoom. We do encourage though most clients to fly in um, at least for a weekend. During the biggest part of the snow, I was driving around a couple of clients last week. People come when they can come and uh, you know you show them around. Um, the good news is we have a lot less red tape. So buying a house in Idaho, the document package, the, the offer documents is probably about 20 pages with all the disclosures. Yeah. In California, it's like 100. <laughs> um, you know, we don't have termites in Idaho, so there is no termite inspections and it's not part of our vocabulary. We just do a normal home inspection. It's about $350. That's about it. There's nothing else. There's no other things that you have to worry about. Average house can close in three weeks here. If it's just a normal conventional or FHA loan, if it's a cash deal, you can close in four or five days. Um, wow. I had my fastest closing two weeks ago was one and a half days. Wow. So there's, you know, there's not a lot of red tape. There's not a lot of hindrances. Um, you know, all the big banks are here. You know, if that's what you you prefer, um, all the major banks have branches here, but we also have a million local lenders and, you know, there's, 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 it's a built out, well built out infrastructure for real estate here and um you know we we do well it's uh it's a it's a fun business there's also a big rental market um you know so there's you don't have to be a realtor to do property management in idaho so it's a separate business model um, but they're definitely building rental uh, apartment buildings left and right as well so uh terry uh, isaac is is just nailing it on every level I, i'm so impressed <laughs> and if, if you're considering going to the Boise area, you definitely need to do, and we'll get to his contact information, how you can call him, how you can email him. And I'm sure I probably missed a couple of important points. So Terry, please help me out. What else did we forget? Yeah, Isaac, I know because of the growth that's happened over the last several years, uh, people talk about traffic. Can you address that and what the state is doing to alleviate the traffic that's come with the uh, growth? <laughs> you know, I'd laugh the most when I see those posts because I lived in, I, as a child, I grew up in uh, outside of San Diego near uh, La Jolla for about five or six years when I was a kid. And my course, it was very different back then, but I go to California all the time. I mean, I went to Disneyland last year. This is nothing. The traffic here is nothing compared to anything in California, unless you're in the, the outskirts. I mean, really, we have our interstate system that literally goes right through Boise, and the airport is right off of that. If Terry remembers, the airport is literally downtown. So you don't have to like drive an hour, two hours to get to the airport. This is one of those cities where you can literally drive to the airport. The parking garages are right next to the terminal and you can fly out. You don't have to budget two to three hours. I literally show up 30 minutes before my flight. So our, our infrastructure is really well. The way we have the interstate uh, system, it's I-85. And then we have some state highways and it separates uh, Boise and Meridian and Nampa. I would say even at the worst case scenario, if you literally were going from one end to the other at rush hour, you're, the worst you would ever have during those times is maybe 30 minutes. That's wow. it. But normal times, it takes 15, 20 minutes to get anywhere. And that's going from Eagle to Boise or Boise to Caldwell. The Treasure Valley is super accessible. They're actually building another extension of the highway as we speak. You'll be able to go from Emmett to the interstate, and that'll cut about 15 minutes off of that. Um, so, yeah, the traffic is nothing compared. There's only one road in the city that's getting congested, and that's Eagle Road. And that's the one that has the In-N-Out Burger that just opened for the first <laughs> time in Idaho. It opened about a month and a half ago, and it went from eight-hour waits, and now their wait time is about two hours still. Wow. It's a, it's a massive, and they're going to build three more. They just announced it's so popular, but that's about it. So Eagle Road, Meridian, um, and Eagle are definitely getting full, but it's not enough that it overwhelms us. We're, we're trying to catch up. We, we don't mind spending um, uh, tax dollars to do that, um, but you know it's just gonna, it's just going to be one of those things. And they're doing their best to manage growth. Um, that's why you're seeing cities like CUNA, Caldwell, the outskirts of the Treasure Valley, just like in Las Vegas, David, with, you know, Henderson and all those outlying communities. Yeah. That's the same thing that's happening here. Yeah. And just think of where you're at with that picture behind you of being Boise. <laughs> have all those other wonderful areas that are outside of downtown Vegas, right, that yeah. most people live in. That's the same as us. You know, most people live 
in Meridian and Nampa and CUNA, they don't live in Boise proper. So and and um so if you could share some of the maybe just the top five, I'm sure you have a ton of fun and exciting things for people to go and see and activities. If you could share some of the uh some of that with with people that have maybe never been there or don't know much about the area. Well, this is the outdoor plethora, I mean, outdoor heaven here. Because of our seasonal weather, people are all outdoors here. So we have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles of hiking trails. We have the hills, uh, mountain biking galore. In the wintertime, we have skiing, which is just 30 minutes away. We have night skiing, 30 minutes away from downtown Boise. You can go skiing at night. Um, and then, you know, less than two hours, you're in Sun Valley, which is world famous or McCall. So those are serious ski areas, less than two hour drives. Um, so outdoors, we have um, tons of water bodies. We have some really large lakes. We have the Snake River, the Boise River, the uh, Salmon River. All of that allows water rafting, kayaking, paddle boarding, swimming. Um, we have a very vibrant wine region here, which people don't expect, but it makes sense because of our climate. So we actually have a, a really cool, along the Snake River near Caldwell, there's about eight or 10 wineries. They all have these wonderful tasting facilities there and you can take a tour. You can actually uh, do it yourself or we have tour buses that take people through there, fishing, boating. Um, and then on the other side, if you're not into the outdoors but you wanna do normal things, we have you know all the massive movie theaters, you know, 30 screens, we have Top Golf now. We have awesome bowling alleys that are super fancy. You know, we have everything. We have our own opera. We have several ballet companies. We have our own Philharmonic Opera or Orchestra. We have an outdoor Shakespeare Festival every summer. We have uh, world concerts that come here. I've seen everybody here from back in our days. I saw Journey. I've seen Foo Fighters. Uh, you know, Taylor Swift comes here. I mean, everybody comes here now. Um, and then, of course, we have sports. You know, Boise State is big with football, basketball. We also have a, um, a semi-pro hockey team for people that want that. Um, so we basically have something for everybody, tons of shopping, you know, everything that you could want here is, is available. And once again, all of that is done in a safe, clean, graffiti-free and panhandle-free environment. Literally, you don't see how about anything. How about smashing grabs? Don't even know what that means, Terry. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. What is your metro population? So... Boise itself, by itself, just Boise is about 240,000. But when we take that whole Treasure Valley that I talked about, the nine cities, it's actually getting up there. It's close to about 800,000 now. Um, and that, you know, it's growing, it's growing, but you don't feel it. And Terry was here. It doesn't feel like a big city. It still yeah. has that, that the small town feel. It really That's doesn't. Nice. You don't feel like you're in Portland, Oregon, or you just don't feel that at all. Hey, David, let me just uh, ask another question here. So Isaac, I know that the way you've touched upon it, you can pretty much have housing wise, anything you want from rentals all the way, if you're far enough out, probably a very affordable housing. But I also know that people are attracted to, to Eagle. Can you just talk about Eagle yeah. for those who haven't heard of it? We do have some very high end yes. homeowners and uh, wealthy people in the group. And, and so it may be appealing to them. If you can touch upon Eagle for a little bit, that'd be great. So 30 years ago, Eagle was just, in the outskirts, a bunch of uh, old trailer parks and drug dens and just the scourge of the earth 30 years ago. And today, Eagle has been transformed into our Beverly Hills. It is that beautiful. There's, not, there's tons of man-made water bodies, uh, tons of golf courses. So it's, it's our high-end community. And you can definitely buy a house. The starting, I can even tell you, the, the median price for Eagle is has dropped to 900,000 from a high of 1.2 million a year ago. Um, and then you can buy houses all the way up to six, seven, eight million $8 million. Um, but you're gonna get a lot more for that than you would anywhere else. So an $8 million house here is like a 20 acre, you know, 10,000 square foot house. I mean, it's it's massive. So Eagle has all the, the latest things. It's beautiful. There's more Range Rovers in Eagle than anywhere else in the country per capita from my understanding. Um, but it doesn't have that feel. Everybody can go to Eagle. There's great restaurants, great shopping. Um, it doesn't feel snobby. There's definitely a lot of gated communities, um, but it still feels accessible. It does not feel like you're going to a different world 
other than it's very well landscaped and the houses cost a lot. But and, and a lot of golf courses too, right? A lot of golf courses and all the subdivisions have uh, man-made water bodies. So you have all the ducks and foliage. It's really beautiful. If you never had been there, you would think that's how it was naturally because it just seems like it's natural. Uh, but you know, it was all created over the last generation. Well, in order to be respectful of time, I mean, time is just flying by. I I, I'm so, you know, and, and I I could just see that every time you have a new client, whether they're buying a 300,000 or a $5 million house, I know that you have this passion and, and you really want to express what, what, what your city has to offer. I was curious if you had any, it sounds like you do a ton of relocations. Do you have any stories that you could share? And maybe you could, you know, when we do these podcasts, we know that we're talking to people that are on the fence. And this is probably the biggest life decision that they may make in their lifetime. Like I, I've been in California for 30 years. I just can't take it anymore. And they're on the fence. So if you could, if you have a story that you could share about one of your clients, and if you could speak directly to somebody that was watching this podcast, maybe they don't want to come to Boise, but they want to, they want to leave. Yeah. What advice would you give them? And uh, please, please share with us. You know, the, the one of the biggest benefits of people that are that are worried about leaving California, it's usually they're not worried about leaving California itself. It's that they don't want to leave their family or their close friends. That's usually what I what I've seen. So it's not that they don't care. They don't nobody cares about really the politics or the government there. So they're happy to do that. Well, our big advantage is we're really close. You know, you're not going all the way to Florida. You can get to Boise relatively cheaply and easily from California. It's a quick flight on Southwest Airlines from any of the Los Angeles, San Diego, or San Francisco airports. So it's not expensive to visit your relatives or go back and forth. It's not even a bad drive. You can drive it in one day, you know, less than a day. So that's one of the things we, we encourage people to say is like, look, come here, check it out. And more often than not, they families end up following them. So I guess one of the stories I have is I had a person who moved here. Um, it was actually before I met Terry. So it was somebody when I first started here, they were reti just retired. They couldn't take it anymore. They moved here from San Diego. And now five years later, um, there are two adult children, um, one of the, the wife's sisters, and then several nieces and nephews have all relocated here because over the last five years, they would visit and they all fell in love with the area. And then they realized that they don't have to leave all the things they loved other than the ocean. There's really nothing else that you would get in California that you can't do here in the, the Boise area. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I talk about my family all the time when I talk to clients. I'm a family man. I raise children here. That helps a lot when families are looking to move here. I'm able to speak to their experience. I'm able to act as a resource. You know, my wife's also a piano instructor. You know, people that want to have kids in music. We have tons of karate and jujitsu academies here, people that want martial arts. So I can speak to all that because I've gone through it with my own children. We're a very pet friendly community, super dog friendly, tons of dog parks everywhere. Everybody has dogs. You know, we have a, a you know, it's really welcomed here. And so I think all of that is what we give to the people that are leaving California when they contact us or look into Boise. We can talk about that. And then I'm also happy to share my electric bills and my utility bills with my clients, I send it to them and they can't believe it. What do you mean you only paid $35 for natural gas? How is that possible? <laughs> you know, how can you not have a, you know, how can your electric bill be $100 when you have a family of five? So those types of things are what we can do to help people that are on the fence of leaving California realize that they can move here, save so much money that they can use that money to go back and forth every few months to visit their family or bring them here to visit. So it's it's not the end all be all. Now I'm not going to speak to Florida and South Carolina and all the other states in the group. It's a little bit farther, but Boise definitely has that advantage of being just down the road, so to speak. Terry, what else do you got? Well, I wanted to, uh, just to thank Isaac for being in these groups for so many years, five years now, five years uh, plus. Five yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Um, but also let everybody know Isaac is a military veteran. He served yeah. our country. His uh, his kids. Are, uh, are are heading towards the military, so uh, a patriot definitely, and uh, and I want him to know how much I appreciate his service to our country, but also service to our groups. Thank you, and we are definitely a pro veteran, pro military state. There's a big Air Force base, 30 minutes from Boise and Mountain Home, um, so we have that. We also have a Air Force contingent, National Guard at the airport, 
So definitely, every if you're a veteran, we have tons of benefits here. You get a discount almost anywhere you go. It's on your driver's license. It says you're a veteran. And basically, everybody loves to take care of vets here. I mentioned earlier, we have one of the best VA hospitals in the country. Um, you know, it's well built out. And I personally do a lot of VA loans for my clients, a lot of veterans that are buying here. So we have lots of experience with that. And yes, my two sons are currently in military school. One's going to West Point, hopefully, and the other one wants to be a Navy SEAL. So they decided to invest their high school years at a boarding school instead of just hanging out you know, and partying at a regular school. <laughs> so one of the things I say, Isaac, on every one of our podcasts is that you need to find a, a realtor that knows what he's doing. You need to find a realtor that's passionate about what he does. You know that you're going to become family. I mean, it's going to be like family. And, you know, um, we've been talking about this the last couple of weeks. It's really interesting that everybody, there's 1.5 million realtors in our country. I mean, let's face it. We have a lot of realtors. Yeah. But we don't have a lot. Did I don't know if you know this. I'm sure you probably do, Isaac. Here, he's a numbers guy, obviously. Um, but less than one percent specialize in relocations. Yeah. And so when you say, "Well, I've got a, I've got a realtor that's my cousin's brother's sister, uh, or whatever," that didn't even come out right. Sorry, Terry. <laughs> I have a realtor that is my cousin's mom's friend. You know, they, they don't specialize in this like Isaac does. So it's it's so important that you find the right person. And honestly, you know, to, to get a little serious here, it can cost you tens of thousands of dollars if you don't have the right person. So Isaac, I would, I, me and Terry are always going to support you. We're always going to refer you. And we're always going to say, if you're going to Boise, you need to call Isaac. And if somebody was going to call you, uh, can you please give your phone number and your email so that people can get a hold of you? Sure. Um, the best way is to go to our website. It's reside 208. 208 is the only area code in Idaho. That's how small the state is. There's just one area code. So reside 208.net. And then uh, my phone number is 208 423 8754. But more importantly, you can find me in your file. If you go to the Leaving California groups and the preferred realtor tab or the under files, I'm definitely there. And one of the things I wanted to appreciate Terry about too is that since that beginning of this group, you know, he now has preferred lenders and preferred moving companies. So the resources that are in these groups are huge. If we can just, you know, get the 300,000 people to realize those resources are all there. Some of them don't have a clue what, what is on these pages. It's amazing. Terry's done all the work for you guys, you know, speaking to the audience, as far as vetting these movers and lenders and realtors. So you don't have to lose money, like David said. You don't have to take a risk that you're going to be working with somebody who, who might not have your best interests at hand. And I personally can attest that Terry has let some of the realtors leave the groups over the years because they maybe didn't meet his standards. And so I'm really proud to be one of those. And thank you. And I'm really glad that David came along on this group and this journey. He's helped us up the game a lot in the last year. So thanks, David, for joining Absolutely. You're, you're, you're welcome. And, and on that note, we do have a YouTube channel as well. And on our YouTube channel, you can go back. And now we have 25 or 30 different cities and you can start going in and you can get very specific and see exactly what that city has to offer. And is, does it make sense to spend three or four hundred dollars on an airline ticket to go check out that city? So we're just going to continue to give. We just want to give value and we're going to just continue to give more value um, every week after week. Um, and in closing, Terry, do you have anything else? No, uh, just this has been great, Isaac. Uh, I'm looking forward to coming back to Boise again. Yes. I'm looking forward to going back to Enrique's again and getting tableside guacamole at that awesome Mexican restaurant. And I would encourage anyone to reach out to you. You've got an amazing relocation guide. People should reach out to you for that alone if they're considering the Boise area. It's an amazing resource. And of course, you are too. So thanks, David. Thanks, uh, thanks, Isaac. It's been yeah, thanks nice. for having me Great today, time. guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go out now and go shovel the rest of the last of the snow <laughs> on the driveway. <laughs> Have fun with that. Yeah, it was not. Uh, my sons aren't here anymore, so they usually do all that for me. So, but anyway, thanks, David. I appreciate you scheduling me today. And maybe I'll come back in the summer and we'll do it again. All right. Thank you, buddy. Everybody have a great day. Bye bye.